is Batman from the old Batman and Robin show that, that from last night. Like, six Batman. Yeah, ex exactly. So so uh, so the kind kind of growing up for me, you know, Batman always had kind of this silly, goofy side. And, uh, and he's uh, not silly. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't show it. He doesn't show it. But in the in the back rooms of the Justice uh, Hall of Justice, he's literally got a silly room. <laughs> it's for training purposes only. Exactly. <laughs> it's got full circle, you know, yeah. being funny and then serious, and we've, and we've gone through a whole cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got to have a straight dude. You got to have a straight man to, uh, to you know, to, to bounce against all of the, the goofy and the funny, you know? Can't have a law without a heart. It's even <laughs> Superman is funny. Superman's funny in this. Superman, no, no, Superman uh, sings in this movie. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> It's like a show tune number two. Oh, it was like <laughs> you guys were talking about that the the process. That's both Phil Lamar and Nolan North. I was asking that. Right. This is the third time I've seen it. So they did both at the same time, right? Yeah. Or not at the same time. But it was both of them had to do the one. Yes. So we combined Brainiac's voice with Superman's voice for Brainiac Superman for Phil. Yes. Had, had to see that song. The song was the most challenging part. So I think Phil Lamar actually sang the song first. Who's the voice of Brainiac, and then Nolan North the voice of Superman kind of followed and matched the voice. And we had to, in post, I think, kind of slide their dialogue lines. Yeah, Nolan can't sing. sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, right? I sang it. it. It took longer for them to sing it than it took me for to write it. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah, you don't know Troy Baker and Nolan North are old enemies. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we're the best of friends, so we can always, you know, just kind of take stabs at each other. But uh, to the missing cast, I thought here, I mean, what we have is Gray DeLisle, Nolan North, Phil Lamar, uh, Spizak, Harry Walgren. We had a, we had an amazing cast for this, and it, these are all same thing as you guys. We're just a bunch of kids that this is. It's not us going to work; it's us going to play. Absolutely. So, and it really pays off. I think when you see. And Kevin Michael Richardson KMR. as part of the uh, Cave Women. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he comes up, Whatever will we do. <laughs> So, Kari, you, uh, we were talking on the, on the uh, carpet out there that you are synonymous with Cyborg at this point. Yeah. You've played Cyborg in action, you've played Cyborg in comedy, you've played him for uh, all ages, all audiences. Um, what's it like tuning him a little bit differently for, for each of these different iterations? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy because it was um, like I always say, you know, it was my first audition, voice offer audition in, uh, in Los Angeles and my first job. So uh, I really wasn't straying too far from myself. Fortunately, I got an audition where I was like, I think I can just do me. <laughs> I think I can just do me and I can you know, pretty much handle this thing. So, uh, so it's just me in a different mood. If, if you write a sad, you know, cyborg scene is gonna probably be car being sad. <laughs> you know, if you if you if you write me, you know, shooting laser beams at drones, it's gonna be you know, depending on my mood, it may be a happy drone shooting, you know, laser beam scene, or you know, a very special, very special, <laughs> very special cyborg, you know, drone shooting scene. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's one of the it's one of those things that I I don't have to I don't have to prepare for. You know, it's uh, you know, I, I literally. I um well I, I usually I mean I wear pants. I wear a robe, <laughs> I wear robe slippers, you know, and when, um, when Kari comes into the session, it's literally like this cage that you put in like the Tasmanian devil and you just kind of <laughs> clear, open the door, just <laughs> let it loose. I do honestly I stick to the script more at, on a Lego movie though, because uh well they, they the last got, line was different though. Yeah, th that's true. The last line was um actually I didn't even but that wasn't even an ad lib. I, I literally was like, I'm not counting on Lego. <laughs> <laughs> They were actually recording that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going you know, to start getting that. You know, I'll just splice the rest in. And, uh, and there we go. We get the, we get the butt. So, you know, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I have trouble sticking to the script sometimes. You know, especially with Cyborg. Because I, you know, because I'm, I'm always thinking, when I say it like that, I think I have the authority to say I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh,
first time ever, and it was cool because I got to be the first time that Lego Batman ever really did anything more than a grunt, which is awesome. And to see how it's grown from that, someone made a comment, I think it was when we did the LA Paley, um, it's, like, it's crazy because it sounds like you guys are more settled into your characters, you're more dropped in. I was like, yeah, which is cool because that's what we're seeing from the Justice League. Everyone's kind of like, got into a groove a little bit more. So, I mean, I, I want to keep making these um, as long as you guys keep wanting keep watching them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> One guy, I'm gonna play it! <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, we're gonna go right here. This kid's been very, very patient. What's up, buddy? Hang on, buddy, the microphone's coming to you. I don't need a microphone. Exactly. <laughs> I'm six years old. What? Why did the Batman use the robot to fight? Super Brainiac. Well, it was all for show. <laughs> <laughs> Sell toys. What's your name, buddy? <laughs> Rowan. Rowan? 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 That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, Rowan, the re answer is because Superman is super strong, and although Batman is formidable, yes. he, uh... <laughs> 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 So he he need, he although he's, he's very strong for a guy, uh, he's not as strong as Superman. So he needed it, it's not exactly a robot. It's like a suit that does whatever Batman does. But and, actually, and, and he wasn't really trying to hurt. Actually, Superman. the truth is, is that he it was he was tricking Superman. Yeah. Because he wanted Superman to think that he wanted to fight it, but he actually just wanted wanted Superman to use ray beams to open up the uh, the, the bat safe. He I wanted the yellow yeah. sun. Is that not correct? I, yeah, yeah. I didn't know you watched. <laughs> I believe it was Kierkegaard who first introduced the notion. All right, uh, my man up here in the orange hat. I teach a class at LSU. <laughs> <laughs> I teach you a course. I'm Nelson. How does it feel like to be Batman and Joker? Very strange. <laughs> very, very, very strange. Yeah, you may not know, Troy has also voiced the Joker, he's voiced Two-Face, you're yeah. all over the DC universe. Yeah, I've, I've uh, there's, a, there's a term for that, but we'll save that for another room. <laughs> <laughs> for awesome. me, I mean, uh, this is, the, I remember the first time I, I walked into, I don't know if you remember, they have Safeway here in the East Coast or New York? Yeah. yeah. Okay, grocery store. I walked into Safeway when I was six, seven years old, and the first graphic novel I ever bought was, was a Batman origin. And um, wasn't wasn't a big one, so it wasn't like one of the similar works. But it was the first real introduction that I had into graphic novels and understanding the story. So Batman, and especially the relationship between Batman and Joker, has been a huge part of the kid in me that's grown up with the adult that keeps trying to suppress uh, the kid. But to to be able to play that, and, and especially growing up in, in late or late eighties, early nineties, where what Tim Burton did with the Batman series, and he really kind of brought it to this dark, really cool, edgier place, and then continue of Batman the animated series. Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, forever will be my Batman and my Joker. And so that's <laughs> and so with this, if, if you'll listen, clearly if you listen to what we did with Arkham Origins or Assault on Arkham, that's, I wanted it to feel like it's a young Mark Hamill because I don't think I can do anything else. Whenever I read the comics, whenever I think about the Joker, what Mark did to me was not just the voice, it was who that character is. When you listen to me doing Batman here, you're gonna pick up on, a, hopefully, a little bit of Kevin Conroy, a little bit of Adam West, a little bit of Christian Bale, <laughs> and a little bit of Michael Keaton. You're gonna get like, no Val Kilmer, no George Clooney. <laughs> a little bit of your favorite. To me, this, it's, it's, what I'm trying to do is really what I think all of uh, the LEGO DC stuff is trying to do, which is take this huge buffet of, of almost 100 years now of, of comic book lore and, and stuff that has meant so much to so many different people in so many different ways, and just put them all together in a really cool, interesting, fresh way. Um, and that's one of the benefits that we have, is being able to not try to be something completely different, but be all of it. Pull from the comic books, pull from the shows, pull from the movies, it doesn't matter. Awesome. And our fight with Superman and Batman is way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 